everyone, my name is Sohail Maharaj and today I bring you the eighth episode of Change Conversation, the series of conversations that we bring to you about change makers who are doing great work in the communities and are helping the world to get sustainable. Today we have with us Brinze. Uh, Brinze, uh, thanks for making it today here. Uh, thank you very much, Sohail. I mean, I'm really glad to be here and to have this conversation with you. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Brinze Bizekewon from Cameroon. I'm a social entrepreneur and a youth catalyst. I'm also the founder of two high impact social venture, Seed Africa and Youth Connect Innovation Lab. But over the, for the past five years, uh, I've been working with young people in marginalized communities and uh, in marginalized, marginalized and economically distressed neighborhoods to provide them with opportunities to bring their ideas to life. Over the years, uh, with, especially with South Africa, we have uh, used agriculture as, as a tool to ensure food security and create employment opportunities for young people. Uh, we have also had a work, uh, because for the past five years, we have also like uh, trained and we have reached out to like 9,000 uh, young people, uh, impacting over 500,000 uh, and carrying out 17 uh, community-based projects. And we have had our work recognized uh, and receiving grants and support from international organizations so, uh, international organizations such as uh, for the, the Polynesian Project, uh, Ed Rising Foundation, and other the Global Youth Mobilization uh, Fund, and other uh, international organizations that have supported our work. I'm also currently uh, a Global Change Maker Fellow with the uh, CDF, and I'm uh, a huge in development uh, fellow with the Impact Two Works. Thank you. All right, I was very inspiring to hear about your work they're doing. You know, it's just a great compliment for all of us. Uh, I mean, uh, what is that triggered you to take this initiative? I mean, you know, we all hear like change stories and all people taking up initiatives and all. What was that actually helped you to take up the initiative? What was that? Okay, amazing. Thank you very much again for this opportunity. Um, I've always said, and I see say, uh, young people are one of the most mis uh, one of the most mismanaged resources Africa currently has right now. I actually, young people and land, they are like the most mismanaged resource Africa currently has right now. And if you look at critically working with young people in marginalized communities, you see that uh, over 60% of these young people live on less than a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars annually. That's crazy. And with increasing youth unemployment, but agriculture is a trillion dollar business. And uh, Africa as a continent currently has like 61% uh, of the uh, world arable land like uncultivated that is crazy that means there are opportunities there for young people to harness right now we also look at why are young people not getting into this sector because that's what we have been currently working on and we look at the challenges they face getting into the sector like um agriculture is unprofitable they think that's something like for old people they think that it's uh they just think about agriculture as pro crop production so right now we're using agriculture especially with digital technology and entrepreneurship as a tool to help young people not just to see agriculture as a way of life but to see the business aspect of, of agriculture let me tell you um i've lived there i've been there i understand the challenges that some of these young people go through i mean i grew up in a marginalized community i've uh, i've gone a day or days not knowing where my next meal will come from and living on less than a hundred dollars these are the challenges that young people face and these are the challenges that we are working we are currently working to help them we're using agriculture as a tool to help them create agriculture uh, create them uh, business venture and create employment opportunities for others mm. in their community basically that's what we are currently working on and that's my inspiration seeing other young people create uh, opportunities using agriculture which I insist agriculture and land are the most mismanaged resource Africa currently has now as a continent. I see perfect. Like it's just very inspiring to hear about, about all the steps that you have taken and all. I mean, uh, can I know like how many people you have you have been able to impact or the number of people you have trained or the services that you have provided to the people? What is the number of impact or the number of success stories you have been able to create? Like uh, I earlier mentioned, um, we have been able to like uh, train and reach out to over 9,000 young people for the past five years that we have been working. And we have impacted over um, 500 uh, million lives. And uh, for us, we carried like several community-based projects. Like, well, let me take you uh, down memory lane, like with the recent uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we have, uh, with the support of the Pollination Project and with the support of the Global Asian Mobilization Fund, we launched a food emergency uh, response project that uh, supported um, over 
19,000 uh, 19, people actually. And then uh, we are also launching projects that are adaptability projects and, and youth employment projects out of the COVID-19. And recently we just launched, uh, climate change is something that's uh, gradually affecting like everybody and it's affecting the agricultural sector. We recently launched the Green Space Academy, which is focused on like training young people on regenerative agriculture and, uh, and how they can grow their own foods like from home and everything. Uh, it's crazy that with uh, the arable lands and everything that Africa has as a continent, um, a situation such as, uh, which is a situation by the way, uh, the ongoing uh, war in Ukraine, Africa is currently affecting Africa in such a way that Africa is in their need of food. So we have to engage young people to produce their own food. And that's why we are uh, using digital technology. So we try to like uh, incorporate, let me just, um, Talk about digital technology. We have uh, designed, recently I'm working with my team, we have designed a system, an, an urban agricultural system, where we can actually provide homes and families with a system they install there and they produce their own food just from home. Uh, our communities and our, our people need like a healthier option, healthier food option. They need to be able to produce their own food. And uh, with the food and everything that they have in market, you see that there's like increased use of fertilizers and stuff like that, which is not healthy for the people. And also you look at people in urban communities, they complain like uh, they don't have land, they don't have a uh, space to grow their own food. Now with the system that we have designed, you can actually take the system, it's just a four by four meters um, system. We call it economy. So you can take install in your house and we, you grow your own food. We offer the training uh, for them to be able to do that. And uh, one thing that we're also currently doing right now, we are launching uh, a knowledge hub, which is like um, an agribusiness and a food a technology hub where we incorporate every aspect of uh, agricultural business. We're helping young people to start uh, businesses, agricultural businesses, not just in pr pr uh, production. We're looking at processing. We're looking at people that are into restaurant business and everything. So we want to provide them with the resources to be able to do that. And it's very fascinating. I can read it on your shirt. Like it's Youth Connect, you know? And that is the name of your initiative, Clayson, isn't that? Am, am I right? Like, yeah, you know, that, I mean, that's great. Like, you know, when people start wearing like the tag or the work that they do, and you know, it really fascinates other people and lots of people. And you know, they take up their own initiatives or they join, they cooperate with you. I mean, this is a, just a great way to spread positivity. You know, I mean, you, you spoke about like how Russia Ukraine crisis created a havoc in your country, and you know, and how your initiative is trying uh, to to ensure like food security I and mean, that's very great i mean uh Rinse, uh i would be very interested to know what are the different challenges that your initiative is facing or what what were the different challenges that your initiative faced okay thank you very much uh just like any in other initiative because uh one thing i also have to let you understand that we are working with young people and we're trying to see how they can also launch their own agri agribusiness uh venture which is more like an agribusiness one. and with our initiative like us it, uh, we are facing like challenges because we need a technical knowledge we need uh experts in the field and everything most of us, like at times, we have like limited background, especially entrepreneurship, and uh, uh, that we can actually transmit to the people. Even though we're trying our best and we're doing our best to make sure that uh, we transmit uh, the knowledge and everything that we have. And also, one aspect uh, which is more like uh, a major aspect that we're currently facing, like access to finances. I mean, coming from where I come from, I I'm in Africa, West Africa, and when you want to sell what you have there to the outside world, and uh, because most, especially most of us, we don't have the the, the platform to be able to like sell what we have to the global world. So it, it's limit us because it's, uh, it becomes a challenge for us to access like uh, resources, funding and opportunities. So we need like funding opportunities to be able to uh, harness, to be able to implement what we are currently doing right now and to be able to support other young people that are want to create like agribusiness ventures. And we are also looking like, uh, we need like a board of directors because um, we need expert to be able to uh, and these resources that we call, we need to be able to sell our work, uh, our work to a, to a, to, a, to a global uh, community. We need experts that have been there, that have done it, that can guide us uh, through that. So that's actually a major challenge for us. It was really like appeasing and like I'm really glad like you know you've been able to impact a lot of people and you're trained people. You're providing them like mentorship and giving them like uh, an essential platform to grow and all. I mean. Uh, I would want to know, like, uh, what were the initial bottlenecks, the initial challenge that you faced, your initiative faced? Okay, amazing. Okay, thank you very much. You know, um, starting um, a venture like um, a person that I'm going to talk about from a personal perspective because I don't have like any background in entrepreneurship and everything. I just get up like, okay, I was driven by passion, and at times uh, it takes more than passion to build what we are currently building right now. 
And uh, I'm also going to be talking about going, how going through the CDTF uh, fellowship has actually transformed. Because at times you feel like uh, this thing that I'm doing is the right thing, and why you have not done maybe the necessary studies and everything. And I think uh, this is something that CDF has actually helped us to like um, be able to build like uh, to be able to ide ideate and build like uh, problems that are solutions to problems that are actually being faced. Uh, uh, by a community, the solutions to the root cause of the problems that are being faced. Because at times you solve, you solve superficial problems uh, in the community and you think that you're actually doing uh, uh, the work. So actually that was a challenge that we actually faced. And like I, was, like I, I said, uh, building a team, coming up together with a team, it's, it's not always easy, especially those that are passionate. At times people that might just tell you they want to join what you're doing, they're interested in what we're doing. But when they come, they're driven by motivation and driven by self-interest. They don't get to like do the work, so, which is actually a challenge. But I think uh, like going through the CDF program has actually helped us a lot because we are ready to like um, restructure our programs and uh, to target more, to target directly the people that we really want to work with. That has been like a, a great help to us. So, I mean, what is the, what is it like, if I had to ask you, like, I mean, how are you seeing your, like, initiative for next five years? What is the plan for next five years? Why, where, 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 where will you see your plans and what are the objectives that you're planning? Who will be the, you know, target people and all, you know? So can you just elaborate a little on? <laughs> Amazing. I mean, thank you very much for that because it always excites me to talk about that because um, that's what the team does every day. We're building, we're trying to see how we can actually get to where we want to. Because for the next uh, uh, five years, because we have like a, a vision, like a, the 2030 plan, because we want to like reach out to 1 million uh, young people. And we're doing that, we, we're creating programs that can actually help us to be able to reach out to, to the people that we want to get to. But it's not just about reaching out to the 1 million people, it's about the community that we want to impact after reaching out to 1 million people, because we're creating a platform. Right now, uh, as I'm talking to you, we are restructuring our program, we're creating a global platform where you can actually, um, the community can actually come together, have resources centered around agriculture and entrepreneurship. And we don't just want to look at uh, our immediate community, we want to look at beyond Cameroon, we want to look at uh, beyond West Africa, we want to go, uh, we're building an, an African agricultural platform. I, it's not like that. I laughed because I was actually discussing with one of our tech uh, guys yesterday, and we talked about how we are building the, the, the Amazon of African, African agriculture, because that's the, the, the vision that we actually have. We're building an Amazon of African agriculture where you can actually come together, sell your products, buy your products, get knowledge and everything that you need to in, in the agricultural uh, sphere. Very inspiring to hear, like, you know, it looks like, you know, it's definitely not going to impact only one billion people but it's going to impact a lot of more people you know i mean that's that's all i can say because uh i mean seeing your commitment to the initiative and the number of people you impacted in just like some ordinary two or three years and now uh i mean you're planning to scale up i mean it, it really gives us a lot of hope and uh i mean people like you are really adding st stability to the to the world and you know it's just making it more easy for people to live, you know, people who are not able to dream, who don't know even like, you know, there are there, there are avenues of better lives and all, like they can have a better day, they, they can afford two times food and all, you know, they can get like good nutrition, or like you are the one, I mean, you are just the stars of your country and, you know, will be leading this country and, you know, ensuring that everybody uh, gets a, a, you know a good share of nutrition or you know just make it more undivided for everybody there you know i mean that's very inspiring to hear like i mean people as i said like people like you are really uh taking i mean the, the commitment that world has given to attain sustainable development goals in the near future and uh i mean i don't have words to pass my gratitude uh, but, i mean uh, what will be your message to the youth of world you know because you have a lot to share like you know you're yourself a great commitment in yourself so what is that you would you would want to share with the youth of world? What is the message? Thank that you you yeah, thank you very much for this. I love this because um, actually, like you said, I have a lot to share, and I always feel like uh, my journey and uh, so can always inspire young people to uh, to try to do like more. Uh, given my, my background, where I come from, like um, from just being an orphan at eight years old to starting two uh, social ventures uh, that can actually create opportunities for young people. It's uh, it's been an amazing journey and it's been a challenging journey. But for young people, it's just like, uh, it's never easy. They should understand that as for us as young people. And also it's just like, you have to take power because actually um, we are not leaders of tomorrow's, we are leaders of today. We don't have to wait for tomorrow 
world to be able to lead. We have to take charge now and take charge of our future. I mean, the, 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 world, the, the future belongs to us. Why don't we just take charge now and, and take control? And to like all the, our leaders and everything, it's time to give young people the opportunity. Like we need, like they have like, working with the, the with young people like I've done for the past years, it's been like challenging. And there are so many young people that have opportunities that could actually create economic, um, have ideas that will actually create economic opportunities and solve challenges in their problem, but they don't, don't they don't do not have the platform to present this uh this uh, these ideas that they have. So we have to create opportunities for young people. We are not leaders of tomorrow, we are leaders of today, and we have to start now. And uh, like I'll also go ahead to say, like um, never give up, like um, you just have to keep pushing. It's never gonna be like an easy journey. That's just a fact. It's not easy, but you have to get, you have to keep pushing. There are days that you just want to give up. There are just days that you sleep and you're like, um, no, I don't think like uh, I can do this. There are days that you're gonna have like uh, rejections. You wake up to a ton of rejections and uh, you don't have to let that uh, rejection so hold you down. You have to get up there. I mean, you've had like three rejections uh, today. I mean, you try to do four other things that could actually bring in a yes for you. So that's actually what I have for young people. Very interesting and very inspiring. Uh, how has been your like fellowship experience like as, as a global change maker fellow? How's been the experience? <laughs> it's been amazing like uh the cdf has an amazing team because the ton of support that they give you like a one-on-one -on -one basis like you can just reach out today uh in the evening in the morning and they're just there to support you it's been amazing and you get to learn a lot connect with young people that are actually doing uh amazing job in their community and this has been like um i've had the opportunity over the years to be like in uh some fellowship or in some uh, so many fellowships and i think like this is like be like one of the most engaging like fellowships that i've been with uh getting to talk getting to go through a one-on-one -on -one process on what i'm doing and it's been amazing all right uh Brinze, it was really great hearing from you you know i wish you all the best uh, at, and uh, we really expect you that you know you keep like doing your great work and you know and keep effectively working for your community and impacting people positively and uh, again, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for having time to have joined us today for this change conversation. Uh, thank you so much, Prince. Thank you. Thank you very much, Safa. And it was such an amazing, uh, <laughs> like I had like a time of my life discussing this with you because this is actually something that so many young people don't have, uh, like I said, we don't have the platform to do that. And discussing this with you, I'm really happy that you had me today. And I look forward to more opportunities like this for young people and for, especially for people that are here to discuss what we have. Thank you.